welcome back to Opal and Mint. I am Ashley and today I'm going to be talking a little bit about watercolor frustrations, painting frustrations. I'm going to give you some tips on what to do when you get frustrated while painting. Painting for me is a relaxing thing, but yes, there are times when I do get frustrated and a lot of times it can be your current state of mind that could be causing these frustrations. But I'm gonna show you what I do to kind of walk my way out of the frustrations and back into the relaxing state of watercolor painting. And that's really the entire goal of my channel <laughs> is directing people to relaxing watercolor. So I figured this would be a really good video to point people to if they are frustrated and need some ways of making watercolor a relaxing and calming experience. Um, I definitely want to paint some today, um, but before I paint, I'm going to talk about one of my recent frustrating experiences and show you kind of how I walk through getting out of that. So uh, hold please. Okay, so if you are a regular viewer of the channel, you will have already seen this particular painting um, and that I didn't, I was like on the fence of what I thought about it. And this particular painting has been frustrating me and I, I'm gonna show you today how we're gonna get out of that frustration. So here is the painting in question. I used this painting in my How I Flatten My Paintings video. Um, I showed you how to flatten this piece, but it's just, it's frustrating me. There's something I don't like about it. We're going to we're going to fix that frustration today. But before we dive into that, I want to give you my how many do I have? 1 2 3 4 5 tips on how to get out of your frustration. Okay, so let's go through these tips real quick and then I'm going to show you what we're going to do with this, okay? So, tip number 1 is stop your painting. Um that may sound wrong, like I'm telling you to watercolor to relax and I'm telling you to stop but stop that painting that's frustrating you. So if you're, even if you're in the middle of it or you just started and there's something that's just frustrating you about it, stop, put pause on that particular painting, put it to the side. Um, because working on it while you're frustrated is not going to help you or that particular painting. So just push pause on that painting. The second thing you need to do is paint something else. So put that one aside and paint something else uh, immediately. Don't go and do something else, paint something else. Whether it's just a splash of colors on the page that makes you happy, it can be abstract, it can be just painting leaves or practicing strokes, but paint something else to get, your, uh, get you out of that frustrating painting-ness. <laughs> so step one, stop it. Step two, start it. <laughs> Stop that painting, start painting something else. Um, the third tip is painting something else. Paint something that you know. So it's paint something that you are familiar with painting, something maybe you've painted a hundred times. Uh, paint something that you are familiar with and know how to paint. So it's just like second nature and it's not going to be frustrating. It's gonna be relaxing and you know it's gonna turn out cute, whether it's a little tiny daisy or um, a little bear, like anything, a donut, anything. Something that you know how to paint and are familiar with, paint that. So stop what you're painting and paint something else and make it something that you are familiar with or something just abstract and swatch your paints. You can just, Go through and swatch your paints and bump them into each other and let them move, but something that is not going to cause you any mental uh, stress and you don't have to think too much about it. Okay? All right, so this painting has frustrated you. You're going to stop it, put a pause on it. No, don't throw it away, but pause, go paint something you know, and then the next tip I'm going to say is look at it with fresh eyes in a couple of days. So. Don't look at it. Just don't look at it because you keep, if you keep looking at it, which is what I did with this, I like put it like up where I could see it so I could analyze it every second. So I could analyze it like all the time. Don't do that. <laughs> put it away. I put it up on top of my cabinet where I couldn't see the painting and leave it for two days. Look at it with fresh eyes in a couple of days 
and you're probably going to see it in a different way. Looking at this now, I don't hate it as much as I did. Uh, looking at it, there's things that I really like about it. And so it's not, when you're in the moment, you, you're not really going to see it quite like it is. So um, sometimes you just need to pause and put it away for a couple of days. Okay. And then my fifth tip, this is silly, but eat a cookie. <laughs> If you're getting frustrated with your painting, eat something that you enjoy, just a little bitty snack. Um, sometimes it can help. <laughs> I'm not saying pig out on food while you're painting, but every once in a while, if you're frustrated with the painting, you need to put it aside, paint something else, and eat a cookie. <laughs> so those are my main tips, but we're gonna get into specifically with this painting, what I'm going to do to help alleviate some of that frustration and stress with this one. So. With this particular one, I decided to start over. Okay, so you can do that. This is a, technically it is a finished painting. It's not exactly what I wanted. So I'm gonna start over. I did, I worked through frustrations and I kept painting and I think I took it too far. <laughs> um, I don't know, there's something about it I don't like. And so I started over and here's where I am right now. I've got, I'm two layers into this. I still have a few layers to go to get this to finish, but I started over. So if you are, if painting is frustrating you and you don't see it turning around, start over. Um, what we're gonna do today though, I've decided I'm starting over and the new one is the painting I'm going to hang. This one's working, okay? <laughs> um, so this one, I've decided, this is not, I'm not using this. Um, sure, I could give it to somebody else, but I'm not 100% I'm not happy with it. So this is, I'm not gonna say it's trash, but I'm going to treat this as if this is going to be a therapeutic tool and a testing tool, okay? We're gonna keep painting on this, and I'm gonna try painting different strokes on it to make it a different style. And this will also, testing and playing with this painting that I've decided is not the one, um, will help me when I'm finalizing this painting over here. So identifying the things I don't like about this, the frustrations I had with this, fixing that and putting it into the new painting. Okay, so I'm gonna put the new one over here. We're gonna, we're gonna set that one aside and we're gonna come back to the frustrating one and we're gonna play. So I'm gonna turn the camera around and basically I'm gonna do some like bold brush strokes in these tiger lilies and um, with no fear of ruining it because I'm already not going to use it. Um, having that, that fear of, when you're <laughs> deep into a painting, that fear of ruining it can, can sometimes hinder what you're willing to experiment and do. So we're going to use this as a tool to experiment and learn and play. And I'm just gonna go crazy on this painting paint it, make it a completely different style, paint some brush strokes that are opaque, and yeah, that's what we're gonna do. So let's flip the camera around, let's play with this, and let out some of our painting frustrations on this painting. All right, so here is the painting. I think what I wanna start with is putting some bold um, lines just on the tiger lilies. Let's see here. All right, so let me open up my paints. I have used a lot of the orange um, on this painting. Well, on both paintings, actually. Okay, so get the paint ready. All right, and then I have this little mixing palette that I've been using. And I think I'm gonna take some red to mix in with my orange and I want to, cause I want a deeper color, um, but I still want it to be vibrant. I don't want to dull it down. Uh, let's take this orange next to it too. Okay, so we're just gonna, we're gonna go in and see what happens. So I have a script brush. This is a size two from Master's Touch and I'm just gonna I feel like I need it like a different color even. Like I wanna make it bold. So, 
Mm, how can I make this fun and different and just completely change this painting up? I'm going to add some black. I just made brown. Maybe that was a brown. <laughs> Get the orange. Yeah, that looks brown. So, and again, I, this is like with no, no fear of messing it up because I'm not going to keep it. Well, I'm not going to throw it away probably, but I'm not going to hang this in my house. So I just want to make this completely different. Here, let's get let's get more bold with it here. <laughs> Putting some kind of dry brush strokes in it. I think um, I've been filming the process of me painting the new one, so I'm probably going to piece together something to show you how I end up painting this. So if you're curious what I end up doing differently, um, stay tuned because whoops, when I do finish that, I will probably post something. But um, I would love to know, as I'm painting this, let's talk a little bit. Um, I would love to know in the comments what you do when you get frustrated. Do you just get mad and walk away from painting? Um, do you have something that you do to process and go through your frustrations of painting to where you can bring it back to a more enjoyable state? I'm curious. Um, let us know your tips in the comments below as well because... Uh, I want us to learn from each other and I need a different brush. Um, I'm going to take a longer liner brush, thicker and longer. And we're going to go into yellow, like this bright yellow here. Um, anyways, so I would love to know, wow, that is yellow. <laughs> don't like that. So we know we don't like the yellow. Anyways, let us know in the comments below if you have any tips for painting through frustrations. So I know there are a lot of wonderful painters that watch these videos. Um, and I want you to share your expertise with us as well. Okay, so let's go to this one over here. This one was meant to be a little bit more in the background, so I don't put as much detail on it. Okay. So, um, I actually don't dislike the bolder strokes, especially like looking at it through the camera instead of like up close. Um, I might incorporate some of the boldness in my other painting. We'll see. Uh, let's see. I want to see if I can make this center part deeper. I think that's where I kind of messed up is I messed up the deepening in the, like where it is. So I'm going to put some water down here. And I know I said I was going to get crazy and bold, and it's not that bold, but 
it's different. Um, and then I'm going to take a little bit of, I don't know what color this is. I'll just take some of these browns and maybe the black as well and just kind of tap in some depth in the center of this. Kind of little strokes going out. And one thing I did on the new painting that um, I think is going to help a lot is the stamen, I guess that's what they're called, coming out. Um, I did those in masking fluid, and I'm going to paint those last. So when I'm done with all of this, I will be able to paint those in. Okay, let's add some depth to this one too. Just kind of put some water here. I feel like I want to, oh, look at that. I just, I love, I like watching colors move. Um, I forgot what I was saying. Yeah, I completely forgot what I was about to say. Do you ever do that where you just completely forget what you're saying? It's so annoying. I'll probably remember what I was going to say while I'm editing this, though. Because that's helpful. <laughs> yeah, I think I like adding the depth in the center. That's pretty. Okay, um, I think I want to add another color to this painting. I like that it's just green and orange, but I want to see if I add something else in here, um, if it makes me happier or if I hate it. Uh, I also, so when I was trying to make the, the stamen things pop, I made them metallic. And again, I think that's what I don't like about this. And then I I needed that to not stand out so much, so I put metallic throughout the leaves. And I like having some metallic shinies in some paintings, but this particular one, I just don't feel... It's for my great-grandma, and I don't feel like it fits. So fixing the problem that I did with the stamen and I did the masking fluid, um, I won't have to do metallic to make that pop. So like, I think... That will fix my problem, but I want to see, since we're experimenting anyways, I want to see if I put another color in here, what it will look like. So the question is what color and where? I do really like the deepening of that. That helped it a lot. That's really pretty. Oh, that makes me excited. Okay. So I do know that that's, that's happening in the other one. Um, what color would you put with this? I don't really think a blue would work. I could do some yellows through the leaves. That way there's a little bit more variation in color of the leaves. I think maybe the leaves are two, one, one color. Um, there is different values of that color, but I think that the leaves need to have some difference. Um, I think that's the problem. So let's see what happens. If I, it's like, where do I want to put this? Where's the first one going to go? <laughs> uh, let's start here. Let's, let's just, I'm just going to, again, we're experimenting. And it might be that I take a little bit of green to put in the yellow leaves. Just kind of touch a little bit of green to that. Let's see. Pretty. Yeah, I think this is just going to add a little pop of vibrance and contrast, just a little bit different in the background. Yeah, and I think I'm not going to go as dark with the green um, around the flowers. 
Let's, okay, and then we're gonna touch a little bit of green in some of these. Yeah. That's pretty, right? Tell me, tell me in the comments what you think I should incorporate in the final painting. Um, if the yellow is too much, if it's too distracting, let me know. Um, and it might just be that I've changed my variation of greens. Um, so it's not just one green color. I think that might be the problem. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I don't, I don't want to spend too long on this video, but I, I just wanted to kind of walk you through, um, how I, walk myself out of some frustrations. And again, if you have any tips, please let us know in the comments because I'm sure there are some other amazing things that you can do. Uh, these are just the things that, that I do. And the main one is identify when you're getting frustrated with it. Stop and do something else. Stop and paint something else. Okay, so another thing, um, I told you what to do with a specific frustration, you know? Uh, but if you're just frustrated and nothing, nothing your painting is working and you just, you just need color. Um, I will show you what one thing that I will do. Just putting color on a page that doesn't have a specific purpose. Um, abstract art can be very, so I like abstract art and I love it hanging, but another th thing that abstract art is good for is getting you out of your frustrations and getting you to loosen up in your non-abstract art. <laughs> hope that makes sense. Um, but just putting some colors on a page and playing with color, just, I'm just like diving into random colors. Um, And just playing can, I love that purple. Just seeing these pretty, pretty colors um, can help get you out of your frustrations and back into like that love and joy of painting. You know, oh, so pretty. And like I said, another, another like thing is you can do brush exercises and, um, just like practice your leaves and your petal shapes or just different things. Um, but just putting color on a page can be so much fun. Oh, let's, let's, where's my pigment salts? Because that will add to the fun here. I think they're in the other room. Having stuff, um, on hand like these pigment salts <laughs> that just bring joy <laughs> um, is another awesome tool. So just put a bunch of color down and then I'm gonna put these pigment salts down. I've only used these pigment salts on just clean water. Um, so I'm curious to see how they interact with color that's already down. And then we'll maybe like put a little bit more water in some areas. These are color changing pigment salts from Boulder colors, by the way. Um, so I'm just gonna get some like water and drip it on some of these. Kind of activate those a little bit more. And then maybe I don't know, swish it around a little bit. Just play. So if you're frustrated, do something like this. It's experimental. That's just color. That's not, you're trying to do an exact shape or anything. Um, just play with your watercolors because it can be so much fun. Yeah, I'm gonna let this dry and I'll let you see what it looks like when it's done because I mean, I'm curious, so. Yeah, oh, I love it. 
Okay, so I think that's gonna be it though for this video. I, I hope this was helpful for you. Um, I've been meaning to and wanting to do this video for a little while. And um, I don't like this artboard very much. Anyways, so that's gonna be pretty when I when it's dry and I wipe all these salts away. Oh, this is fun. Anyways, that is gonna wrap it up for this video. If you did enjoy this, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already and you want to see our future videos, hit that subscribe button down below and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. The road noise bothers me. Okay. I can't read from that far. I have to go take a picture. Um, yeah, I hit my head on the camera and it's red and it's nice. Anyway. And again, another, hold on. Oh my gosh. Do you have to rev your engines so much?